Hello friends, welcome back to our little coffee club. Today we're gonna to be talking about the water solution that I've been using to brew coffee and to put into my espresso machine. What kind of led me to make the video uh, right now is if you guys noticed on the last uh, on the last video, the very last espresso shot that I pulled on the Bianca, I forgot to use the puck screen. So since I forgot, it's the very first shot and the only shot that I've ever pulled on the Lelit Bianca without using the puck screen. You guys know that the puck screen kind of helps uh, for the coffee machine to stay clean. So the grounds don't really go up into your, into the shower screen there on the group head and kind of gets inside the machine and starts to dirty things up. So I've used the puck screen for every single shot except for the last one. You guys maybe caught that, <laughs> I messed up. That led me thinking maybe I should just go ahead, flush the machine for the first time and kind of talk, finally talk a, a little bit about maintenance and what I plan on doing and what kind of water I've been using. Okay, as far as my filtered water, the water that I use just for filter coffee every single morning, it's just tap water that I run through, through my Brita uh, jug. I have one of the jugs that you keep in your refrigerator. These water jugs are quite inexpensive and available on Amazon or at Walmart. Using these filters. So these filters right here. Now it's something that I've done for years now and it's what I like doing. It's simple, easy. Each one of these filters, you could just order them from Amazon. I'm gonna try to give you guys on the screen as I talk about these items, maybe screenshots and a little bit of help as to maybe the website or how it is that I purchase these items and the prices and things like that. Uh, you guys can also comment below and if I miss anything or there's something that you want me to elaborate further, just uh, leave me a comment and we can talk about it. So as far as the Brita filters, it's just what I've always been using for drinking water. I think the water comes out um, nice and clear, great tasting. Uh, another thing that you got to keep into account is the water that comes out of the tap in the area that you live in. So it's not always the same, obviously. So you know, in my area, it's not the best, it's not the worst. So the water that comes out of the tap is pretty high quality and it doesn't have a lot of chlorine taste. It's not, uh, you know, it's not really soft water, but it's also not really hard water somewhere. You know, it's, it's not too bad. Let's just say it's not too bad. So I'm okay with that and just uh, filtering the water through the Brita uh, jug, you know, for me, that's a good enough solution for just regular filtered coffee. Filtered coffee and the water that we drink. So what I do with these filters, the, you know, if you go this route, the jug itself costs something like 20 bucks or something like that, it's pretty cheap. You can even find them at Walmart, you can order it through Amazon. And the filters, they're gonna end up costing you probably about five bucks each. So, I mean, even if you drink a lot of water, it should last you like a month. So I, what I do with, with that solution is just, I put a new filter every month, okay? so. Another thing that you wanna be careful with is just make sure that you write it down somewhere because you, you won't remember. <laughs> you will not remember. Maybe put a reminder on your phone, do something like that that's gonna help you uh, to make sure that you stay on top of your filters or before you know it, two, three months went down the, the road and you forgot about it and you haven't changed your filters. So put a reminder on your phone or write it somewhere on your calendar and just make sure you stay on top of your filter changes. So the Brita gets a new filter every month and that's what I use for regular, you know, my regular brew coffee, okay? My filter coffee. As far as the espresso machine, and um, you know, on the Breville, that's all I used. I just put the water from the Brita jug into the machine. I never had any problems. Again, that's gonna have a lot to do with, especially the calcium that's in the water in the area that you live in. Uh, calcium is the main corporate for lime scale and the buildup of calcium deposits, obviously, in your machine. So, uh, you know, make sure that the water that comes out of the tap is not very high in calcium. Okay, so in, in the uh, Brevo, that's all I used. I just used water from a Brita jug and <laughs> put it in there. It's the same water that I was drinking. And to me, it was perfectly fine and I never had a problem. Uh, now, on the new espresso machine, I decided, you know, let's take it one step further because this machine is, obviously, you want to protect your investment. It's a lot more uh, costly if something were to happen to it. I looked at a lot of information and I ran into some videos from Whole Latte Love. So Whole Latte Love is, a, you know, they have a, a full line of, um, you know, coffee equipment. And as a matter of fact, that's where I got the espresso machine from. I got it from them. 
Uh, and I also bought a jug. I think they call it, I'll, again, I'll look for a picture or something, put it here on the screen. I think they call it the Penguin or something like that. But is this, is this, these are the brand filters that's in there. And I believe this company is the one that makes it. You know, they, they highly recommended this jug. They said that the filters uh, are specially designed to remove calcium from the water and it exchanges calcium for magnesium. Magnesium is safe in your espresso machine. It won't build a uh, scale and you should be okay. So that's this filter specifically designed for that. In addition to that, okay, in addition to that, the Lely Bianca comes with a proper filtering solution. It's not like one of those little carbon filters that, yeah, you know, they remove a little bit of the chlorine taste and maybe do a little something. But this is a, you know, a lot better filtration uh, device than what you normally would get. So the Lely Bianca comes with one of these filters, okay? These filters, I buy them, well, I just bought them once, right? So I, but I ordered a bunch of them. I, I got these filters from Crema. I think they're in the UK. And I could not find here in the US somewhere where I could order the authentic Lelite filters, okay? Uh, at a better price. So I just ordered it from them. The cheap, the filters were quite cheap, inexpensive. At least, I don't know, it seems inexpensive to me. Each one costs around $7. The problem is the shipping, okay? So they sell you one of these little boxes for 15 something, 15 something, you're gonna get two of them. So again, each filter is like $7 and some change. The problem for me, being that I'm in the US, was the shipping. The shipping was like $20 or $22, something like that. It was, it was a little bit more than 20 bucks. Uh, and the filters, again, they're like $7 each. So since the since the shipping was roughly the same, I just went ahead and ordered like four of these boxes. So I have eight filters, okay? And the shipping was 20 bucks. So all together for the eight of these filters coming from Crema with shipping and everything, it was like $82, $83, something like that. And I'm gonna be set with filters for quite a while. So here's the, here's the plan as far as the, as far as the filters with the Bianca. So, I plan on changing it every three or four months depending on my usage, okay? So if, if I've had some holidays and I've been out of the house and I haven't used the machine for a couple weeks, maybe I stretch it to like four months. Other than that, I'll just replace it every three months, so quarterly. So that means I'll go through four of these filters a year at most. So I got two years worth, so I'm set, okay? So, so this is basically all I'm planning on doing for you know the water that's, that I'm using on my Bianca. Okay, so for filter coffee, it's just this, and that's what I drink also. Uh, so this one gets changed every single month. And then the jug, the jug that takes these filters, uh, that gets replaced whenever I do this one. So, I mean, I only use this jug just for making my, just for my espresso machine. That's all I use it for. Uh, not even for my filtered brewed coffee, because for me, this is just perfectly fine and it tastes great. So, so but you know, because of that uh, calcium to magnesium exchange that this filter does, uh, it's the reason why definitely I wanna use it in my espresso machine. And, and that's all I use it for. So again, whenever I change the one in the machine, I will change the one in the jug. So every three to maybe as much as four months, these filters here will get changed, okay? So three, four times a year, I'm getting new filters for my espresso water solution. All right, so being that last time I forgot to uh, use the puck screen, <laughs> I said, you know what? Let me just go ahead, flush the machine for the first time. We're gonna flush it out, do a back flush today, and, and then replace the filter inside the machine. And at the same time, later on, I'll go ahead and replace the filter on the, on the jug. So let me go ahead and, and start up the espresso machine because to back flush it, obviously it has to come up to temperature and all that or you can't, you can't run it. So let me go ahead and start that up and we'll go to the other counter and start working on that. All right, while I wait for the machine to come up to temperature, let me talk to you guys a little bit more as to the back flush. So basically for the back flush, I mean, it's pretty simple. Everyone watching this video probably knows about it, but every now and then you get someone new that's trying to learn. So let's go over it. You know, you use a blind basket. It comes with the machine that you buy normally on the Brevo, it came with something. And on the Bianca, it also came with something. So 
I, I imagine when, whenever you buy a machine that allows you to back flush it, it's gonna come with something to do it. But basically it's just a, um, a, a porta filter basket that doesn't have any holes. So the water can't come out, it just goes backwards into the machine. And then you use a detergent. So today I'm gonna use one of the ones that came with the Brevo machine. They included these three little packets. I'm gonna use two of them today. I'm gonna use one to run through the espresso machine. And then I'll use one for the steam one and, and run that and I'll show you guys um, basically what you do with that. Now, after I'm done with the three packets that they sent me, I plan on using the little, these little tablets that I was using on my Breville, just because I have them. After I run out of these tablets, I'll probably order uh, what Kerry told me. Um, Kerry, maybe you can leave it as a comment on this video as to the powder, the, the name, so people can see it. I, right now, on the top of my head, I don't remember and I, I have it written down, but maybe you can just comment below, leave, leave us the name there. I know it's a very popular one. It's a very popular brand, so uh, that's probably the one I'm gonna, I'm gonna order. Once I run out of this, you guys know me and wastage. I'm not gonna throw these out, I'm gonna use them. So after that, then I'll order what, what the powder that Kerry was telling me. Something else I wanted to mention that is very important, guys. Do not run distilled water in your espresso machine, okay? Distilled water is water that doesn't have any minerals. Uh, first of all, you shouldn't drink water without minerals. It's not good for your health, but uh, also, it is very corrosive. It's going to rust your espresso machine and you, you don't wanna do that. So, you know, distilled water is just very corrosive and it'll rust out everything. So don't, don't, use, <laughs> don't use distilled water. Uh, now, if you were to ask me what's the, probably the best way to go about water, well, I will have to agree with a lot of folks out there that use distilled water, but add the minerals that you need to brew coffee, okay? First of all, distilled water won't uh, extract coffee very well and you won't get the best flavor. So why go through all this if we're not gonna get the best flavor? That's what we're after here, okay? So that's one thing. But the other thing is, like, like I already mentioned, you know, it's not good for your health. You, you, you need water with minerals in it. Now, the amount of minerals in the water and the type of minerals in the water, that's what you wanna control. So if you start with water that has no minerals, then what a lot of people do is they buy packets that contain the minerals that you need for brewing coffee, okay? And what gives you the best flavor. Be careful with the packets. Uh, there are two kinds. There's some for just for like filtered coffee, so you do pour overs and things like that. And those packets, most likely, they're gonna have calcium, and you don't wanna use that in your espresso machine. So if you go with the packets, and make sure you're getting the right one. So the ones for the espresso machine probably are gonna have magnesium and not calcium, because again, that's what builds scale. So just make sure you're using the right packets. And you know, also, you can make like your own uh, formula uh, for the water. I think the website is Barista Hustle. I'm gonna try to look it up and put it here on the screen so you guys can uh, check that out if you want. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys already know about that, but you can make your own water. You can, uh, it's very inexpensive to buy the minerals. It's only like three or four things that you can add to the, to the water. So, and you get these big packets that last you forever because the amount that goes in the water is extremely small. So, but you know, it's the hassle of making it and then you gotta keep all this stuff and you gotta buy the distilled water or make your own. So yeah, it's not the route I wanted to go, although I will admit that probably is the best way to do it. You know, just get the distilled water and add a packet of the minerals that are safe for your espresso machine or make your own. All right, now that being said, I think I covered enough. Let's just wait for the machine to come up to speed. Again, if you guys have any question as to any of this stuff, just comment below and I'll make sure to get back to you. I answer every single person, so. In a second, we'll go over to the other counter and do a back flush. Okay, so the machine is almost up to temperature. I wanna show you guys a couple things. So here's the jug that contains the, the filters that do the, I, I think they call it the penguin. Again, I have to look that up. I, I wonder if I'm all wrong about that. It's a different animal, the duck or something. <laughs> I think it's called a penguin. Uh, anyway. It has a little counter on top, a little digital counter that every time you pour water into it, it's gonna count like one fill up, right? It has X amount of fill ups before it starts flashing at you. When it starts flashing at you, that means you should change your filter. 
it, you know, I usually change the filter before that happens, but I don't remember how many Phillips, but you get X amount of Phillips. By the way, again, stick around to the end of the video because there will be some coffee brewing happening. So <laughs> if you want, if you just want to get these tips and this kind of, you know, stuff, then, you know, after we're done with all this, you can click off, I guess. And, but we always brew coffee here. Okay. It's what we do. We chit chat, we talk, we learn a little bit about coffee. I learn from you guys probably more than you guys learn from me. But anyway, maybe I entertain you in some way. Okay. So these are the little filters. Okay. You see, they say magnesium mineralized water. So they remove calcium and exchange it for magnesium. Okay, so the way you use these uh, type of filters, they're all roughly kind of the same. In the case of this one, they want you to like put it in the jug. You, you remove this part real easy. You just take this out and then you, you put the filter in, in the water and you let it sit there for like five minutes. After that, you install it in here and you do your first fill up and you dump that water. If you want to maybe do that a couple times, dump that water and then after that you can start using it. So it's really easy. They're all roughly something like that. So that's, I'm gonna get this process started now. So, uh, you know, while I'm waiting for the machine to come up to temperature, I can have that done already. All right, let me show you guys something else. So, you know, it's very difficult to move the machine around. It's very heavy. So if something that can help you guys, just a little tip. If you have a counter like mine that's very smooth, you know, you can put a little, you know, it's easy to lift up a leg. You know, that part is, is pretty easy. You can lift up a leg and just slide a little cardboard under each one of the legs, and then you can slide the machine. Real easy, I mean, with one hand, you can just slide it around. So maybe this is a little tip that could help someone out there that struggles a little bit with moving the machine around. So now from, from this from this spot right here, I have access to the, to the back of it. I can get into the water tank and change my filter and all that stuff. So in a minute, in a minute, we'll go ahead and do that. But yeah, if you struggle with uh, moving your machine around and you have a very smooth surface like I do here, uh, perhaps just put a little cardboard and then you could easily slide it. Okay, so the procedure for back flushing the machine is, uh, you know, very simple. <clears throat> so on this machine, since you have the flow control, just open it all the way. Right here, it's fully opened. Okay, I'm gonna use the bottom left just because it's easier to pop this thing out and put my blind basket in there. Now, Carrie tells me that she always leaves the blind basket on the spouted and she just always uses and her bottomless porta filter for making her her coffee so in my case i use both maybe i'm you know what all the last few videos i have used this and moving forward i might do exactly what carrie suggested so <laughs> believe me i think it, it adds a whole bunch of value to be able to to look at the extraction and you know moving forward and making the videos if i wasn't making the videos you know, I would use either one. I wouldn't care so much. And most likely I would use the spouted almost always because that way I don't have to worry about it. But, <laughs> you know, but if I'm making videos, I do see how it's a lot more fun for myself and for everyone involved to kind of take a look at the channeling thing and everything. And since I've noticed so far, I haven't had a mess. I'm willing to risk it moving forward. So let's see what, what happens. Let's see what develops here. So for now, I'm just gonna do this, but moving, moving forward, maybe I'm gonna do exactly what Kerry suggested. <laughs> okay, so this is what you do. Now let's add the, the little bit of powder. Okay, um, and my jug is, by the way, my jug is already ready. I, I filled it up a couple of times and threw that water out and now we're ready to use. Okay, so this stuff, let's see, I haven't used it, but I imagine you just, uh, you know, you just add it here. It's like little, little pellets. Okay, it's not a, it's not a whole bunch, but I, that's all you need. That's pretty much the same thing. Like if you were to dissolve one of those little tablets, that uh, what I used to use before on the Breville, so probably the same thing. Okay, so now the idea here is, let me lock it in. Okay, now it slides around because <laughs> that's the little cardboards. So imagine I dump it on the floor. Oh my god. All right, <laughs> that wouldn't be a lot of fun. All right, so uh, 
the idea here is that you run the machine for 10 seconds. After that, you stop it and you wait until the water flushes out the bottom here. You're gonna see it coming out the bottom. So make sure your reservoir is empty, okay? And make sure you have enough water to do your process, okay? And that gets done five times. So five times you run it for 10 seconds, you stop it. Once all the water comes out of the bottom and you'll see that, you can run it again. You do that five times. After that, you check, make sure all your soap is gone. It should be. And you run it without soap five times and just rinse everything out. After that, you can do the steam one if you want. So just put another pocket into one of your milk uh, little jugs and, and water in there and just run it with water and the soap and let it you know, get in there and do its thing, let's say. <laughs> okay, we're almost ready to go. All right, so let's go ahead and start the process. So we're gonna run it for 10 seconds. We stop it. Okay, that's not all the water. You're gonna, it's gonna, it's more is gonna come out. At least that's what I'm expecting from the videos that I watched and... Oh, we're not getting much. <laughs> okay, well, this time that's it, I think. I should run it again. So let's go for the second one. You know, this gives you guys a... Uh, I mean, if you've never done this and you're new on the Bianca, well, you're seeing like what you're gonna go through. Okay, this time more came out. Yeah, that's a lot more water coming out this time. So you kind of wait until there's nothing coming out. That's why the process will take you like maybe like, I, I don't know, like 10 minutes to do this thing because you're waiting. But really you're only running it five times for 10 seconds. Okay, that's our third one. I might speed up the video. If you notice that, you know, I didn't say it just yet, but I think I might speed up the video here so I don't, <laughs> so you guys are not too bored with this process. We'll see, maybe not. Okay, so there's not a whole bunch of water coming out. Okay, after this, we're gonna do one more and then we're just gonna do with just, just clean water. Okay, this is gonna be the last one I'm gonna do. You know, I lost count. I'm not sure if I did five or six. <laughs> I know I did at least five. All right, that should be enough. Okay, so we have uh, quite a bit of soap. Let me show you guys. I don't know if you can see the reservoir very clearly in there, but it's about, I would say it's maybe about halfway filled. So I'm gonna empty it, and then we're gonna do with just plain water five times. Now it might end up being more than five times because you know I'm, I plan on doing at least five, but if I'm still getting soap, I'll do a few more because I don't wanna be drinking soapy, <laughs> I don't wanna be drinking soapy coffee. You know, it's one of the reasons why I don't, you know, I don't feel very comfortable with doing this so often. You know, I'll go ahead and, and do it every now and then, but man, I'm not, I'm not gonna be running all this soap in the machine and drinking that after, so I don't know. I, you know, I don't know, it's just me. Okay, so at the end, there's still, the, I don't know if it's focused there, but there's still, there's still a little bit of soap in there. It didn't completely dissolve. There's still a little bit left, but I think we did enough flushes. So I'm done with the flushes. I'm gonna just run it with water. All right, so I rinsed this out well. Now it's nice and, nice and clean. Okay, something else I've seen people do is with the last flush, they kind of like let the water kind of 
clean out the group head. You know, I looked in, up in there and everything is super spotless and clean. I always wipe it down when I'm done using it. So it's, it's spotless. There's no reason for me to be making a mess here. I'm not about to do that. But, you know, make sure that the, you know, the, the shower screen and everything is clean. If not, there's a little brush that comes with the machine that uh, it's like kind of angled so that you can get in there and brush everything out, but it's spotless. What's the point, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this water out, which by the way, on the Bianca is very, you know, easy like on most machines. Just uh, take this thing out, dump it, and then you're ready to go. You know, maybe, maybe I should have shown you guys the water that came out of this thing. It, it was spotless. There was, there was no residue of so, uh, there was no residue of coffee or anything like that. Okay, so let's do some, some flushing now just with the water to get all the soap out of there. Again, they recommend doing five of these. Again, 10 seconds. Okay, good amount of soap came out. Let's go again. Okay, a little bit less, so it, yeah, maybe five will be enough, we'll see. I have to tell you, not a lot of water gets used during this process, it's uh, very little coming out every time. It's not even a shot's worth, I don't think so. So yeah, I don't think a lot of water gets used. It's still, we're still getting some soapy water. That was three, I believe. Okay, let's go again. Obviously I'm editing this and I'm doing other things while I'm doing this process. I'm not just standing here flushing. So I'm doing other stuff too. So that's why I lost count because I'm walking around and doing other things. I'm not just sitting here waiting and flushing and for you guys it's a seamless quick process but for me it's probably been a few minutes. I imagine the people that do this process like all the time they, they probably just you know put up very little soap and and do it maybe a couple times or something like that. I don't think they're doing this whole long process <laughs> for if you're, if you're doing it often. But for me, since I'm only gonna do this, I don't see me doing this more than three or four times a year. Whenever I change the filter, I'll go ahead and do one of these things. So depending on usage, that'll be, um, you know, like every three months or maybe every four months. Okay, that water's coming out pretty clear, I do have to say. I'm gonna do just one more. <laughs> I, wanna, I wanna play it safe, I don't like drinking soap. I'm gonna show you guys, this time I'm, I'm not, well last time again, the, there was a lot of soap in the water so it was very hard to see the water but I could tell the water didn't have any coffee residue or anything in it. But this time I'm gonna remember to show you because now there's no soap and you could really see. Uh, yeah, it's very, very tiny little bit of soap. All right, this is the last one. I might not include all of these flushes, but guys, I did like five or six with soap and five or six with no soap. So I might not include all of these flushes when I put this video together. So you might have seen just this one's the last one. Okay, I finished flushing with the just plain water. It's coming out clear. I'm, I'm done with this process. So I'm gonna show you guys the water that's gonna come out of this thing. All right, so let me show you guys. Look at this, it's perfectly clean. There's no uh, coffee residue, the water doesn't look dirty, nothing like that. So really, and this is after like three months of use, okay? So really, do you need to be doing this process like all the time? You know, I'm not going to, I don't, <laughs> I don't know, but I guarantee you I'm not going to. So I'm gonna do this three or four times a year and that's about it. And I, on the Brevo, I did it maybe once a year, so. <laughs> You know, nothing ever happened. 
And so I don't know. I think for me that's gonna be good enough. Okay. Oh, so let's do the let's do the filter. Okay. So let me try to hold the camera and show you guys how to do this. Okay. So here here's some something uh, that I haven't showed you guys. Um, but you see these little sliders. Every time you fill up the tank, you slide this thing up. Okay, so it starts in zero. I don't know if you could see that there. But it starts with zero, goes all the way to 14. And then you get two of these sliders. This one goes from 15 to 28. So that's how many times, every time you fill the tank, you slide it up. And it's supposed to, the filter that's installed is supposed to last you 28 times. Okay, <laughs> 28 fill-ups. I've done 10 fill-ups. Okay. Maybe I forgot to slide it a couple times, maybe. Maybe this one should be all the way up, okay? But there's no way, there's no way that I have forgotten like 14 more times. So I'm changing the filter in like half the time that they tell you that the filter lasts. I'm not saying that's a good idea. I, to me, it sounds a little wasteful, but if you wanna play it careful, being that all I'm doing is just, uh, you know, just using just filters to <laughs> for my water and not using the still water or the little packets or anything like that You know, I just want to be extra careful So maybe this filter for sure could have lasted for a while longer, but Again, I last time I forgot to use the puck screen which led me to doing this back flush And I might as well do the whole process show you guys everything All right, so I'm gonna put my little slider back to zero Actually, I'm gonna put it on one because today it's gonna get filled up. And then this just comes up real nice and easy, okay? Now, I don't think you have to turn the machine off, but I did turn it off to pull this out. And, you know, do you have to do that? No, but probably not, I don't think so, but I just turned it off. I turned it off, <laughs> pull the, the, the tank out, and then inside you could already see, you can see the filter in there. I remember that this whole, this whole black thing, it, you can bring all of this out so you can uh, put the filter in place and everything um, really easily if you wanna do that. I'm gonna see if I can just take the filter, the filter itself out. So can you guys see better like this? Maybe. All right, no, the whole, the whole thing came out again. So you see the filter, the filter is just sitting on this thing, okay, and it has the little holes and it runs through the machine. So let me rinse all this out, clean all this up. All right, so I took the jug, I cleaned it out really well with soap and, and the sponge and everything. I, I gave it a good wash and a good rinse. Then you soak the new filter for three minutes in water, okay, I just left it in there for more than that. I don't know how long it was, but it was a while. <laughs> and now we just swap one for the other. All right, so it turns out that it was very difficult to, to remove this from here, so I used a spoon, and with a spoon, it's easy to pry it out. So just use a spoon and pry it out. Obviously, don't use a knife or anything like that, or you end up cutting this thing. <laughs> but with a spoon, it's pretty safe and easy to get out, okay? So you remove the, the old one. Again, this is the very first time that I do this process, so look at all the little tips and things that we're learning. Now, if it's your first time and you watch this video, hopefully you don't run into some of these little struggles. <laughs> all right, so we installed the, the new filter. <laughs> the simplest thing. This is crazy. All right, here we go. <laughs> All right, so the new one is in there. You see, we got the new one in there. It wasn't as simple as uh, the edit makes it look. All right, let's see. Okay, so this thing, man, I wish I had somebody helping me here with the camera because half the time I'm out of frame, but hopefully you guys have seen everything pretty well. So this just sits in here like this, okay? And then you just sit it back inside the tank and then you sit this tank in the other one and, and, you're, and you're done. This is, Pretty, <laughs> pretty simple, pretty simple. Recording has made it a little bit more challenging, but it's, it's, not, it's not a difficult process. Even the flushing, you know, yeah, you have to wait till the soap comes out and do it several times and stuff, but this whole entire process, okay, it, with a little practice, <laughs> let's see, and you're not filming, okay, and all this stuff, I imagine this might take you 15 minutes. With 15 minutes, you do this whole process, it's simple and easy. All right, here's something else that I think I'm gonna mention. <laughs> uh, 
All right, I went to install this back in the tank. I didn't even remember how it went, but it's, <laughs> it's just little details. There's a little hole in the middle here, okay, a little hole, and that there's a little pin inside that kind of, you, you'll see, that's, that's where the little holes goes into. And then, if you notice, there's a little red valve inside. You see the, you see the little red valve inside? Okay, so this part, this goes over the red valve. This goes over the red valve, okay, this right here. And the little pin goes in here. And once you set these two things up like that, there's only one way you can put it in there and you can't fail and it's pretty easy, but you have to realize that. That the little red valve goes in here and the little pin goes in here. All right, so you press it down hard into place and you end up with your setup again, once again, like this, okay? So I hope that this little video helps some, some of you out there uh, on how to you know, put in your filter, replace the filter, do the back flush, all that good stuff. Even the little tip as to moving the machine on a nice smooth surface you know, with the little cardboards, even that will help somebody that's kind of struggling to move this thing around because it's quite heavy. So hopefully this helps somebody out. Uh, give me a few minutes and we'll try to pull a shot. Okay, so here's something that I wanted to show you guys. So, you know, this is what I meant, right? The water's getting triple filtered. So this is the Brita and the water goes from the Brita to this one. Okay, so then from this one goes into the machine, okay? Now usually, so I don't have to move the machine forward, what I do is fill up a small water bottle. This little water bottle, I usually fill this up and that's the water I pour into the, into the machine's reservoir. Then the machine has the other filter that's inside, right? The Lelite filter. And both of those filters are designed to remove calcium from the water and therefore you should not have calcium buildup. You shouldn't have a scale problem. And that's the solution that I've decided to go with and we're gonna see moving forward if that's good enough. We'll see what happens. Okay, something else I forgot to mention is that I, I took a wet napkin like this and I kind of made sure that the shower screen of the, of the group head is nice and, and clean and soap free because there was some soap residue on there. And you just kind of look in there, make sure everything's nice and clean. If not, you use the little brush that came with the machine and just scrub in there. Okay, there you see it is focused and you can see it's spotless in there. All right, but that's the way it pretty much has always stayed. So far, it's never gotten dirty. And again, that's because one of the reasons is because I'm using the puck, the puck screen and, you know, make sure you run it also between shots and, and you get some of the a little residue out every time you pull a shot and you should you should be okay all right i know i'm gonna have to split up this video the project got a little too ambitious even for me so as you guys could see i'm recording a different video today but i do have to record an end clip to the video you're watching because i'm pretty much out of time i'm not gonna keep on recording here because it got a little out of hand this is <laughs> way too much uh, to put it all in one video up until this point, you guys saw pretty much the cleaning of the, the back flush of the Lelit Bianca and the filter replacement. And we talked a whole bunch about a water solution and what you should do to keep your espresso happy and healthy. Hopefully what I covered here uh, helps someone out there. And hopefully I was able to keep you guys company and you guys enjoyed it in some way. Most of you are very familiar with that process. I'm the one that was learning, right? <laughs> but yeah, today I'm filming another video uh, for you guys. It's gonna be uh, another brew on the mocha pot and my workflow to the mocha pot, I gotta say, it has elevated to a whole new level. <laughs> you guys will see that in a video coming soon. And I'm enjoying the last of it here. I'm sneaking in this little clip. Tasty, you know? Uh, but we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that when I put this video up. I think it will be in, I, I don't know. I don't know, I have quite a few videos ready. <laughs> It'll be in a while, maybe five, six videos down the road, you'll see this. So join the channel. If you haven't joined our little team here, please subscribe to the channel, uh, give the video a like, 
Uh, comment something below if there's something specific that you want me to get into. Now, like I said, on this particular day, uh, you know, I stopped recording and I picked it up the next following day. The next following morning, I pulled two shots on my clean and nicely maintained Lelit Bianca. <laughs> we pulled a couple of shots and I meant to put it all together as one video, but it just, it was too much material, okay? It's just too long, so I'm gonna split it here. Uh, there will be a portion of the video that was just the cleaning and the filter uh, maintenance and we'll pick it up again next week with when I try the machine and pull the two shots of espresso. So join me here next week Again, Sunday, I put up a new video, uh, Sunday mornings at 7 a.m. There's a new video there for you. And again, hopefully I was able to keep you guys company. I appreciate you guys a whole bunch, so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you to all the new subscribers. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, I love it when you guys leave me comments. You know, the engagement between us is what makes it worth it for me and the reason why I'm doing this. So I love my little coffee family and you know, give the video a like and I'll see you guys, uh, I'll see you guys next week. <laughs> uh, I wonder if I should leave that blooper right <laughs> Twice I hit it. All right, let me, <laughs> let me stop laughing and then, all right, here we go.